Hello, I'm Alexia, and let me help you to take the fear out of birth with a mix of real-life positive birth stories and birthing experts sharing their wisdom. I'll also be sharing techniques for getting into the fearless birthing mindset. And join the Fearless Mumership community for bonus podcast episodes, access to free birth preparation downloads, and loads more stuff to help you to prepare for a positive birth. Join today at fearfreechildbirth.com. Hello and welcome back to the Fear Free Childbirth Podcast. This is me, your host, Alexia Leach, and thank you so much for joining me today. Now, you might have noticed that there wasn't a podcast last week, and yet that was that was me. That was me not feeling brilliant because of something that happened in my life. Now, I'm going to talk about this in a bit, because actually what happened to me has given me a bit of a ha-ha moment, and there's some learnings from that that I think that I'd like to share with you because I think they can help you as part of your birth prep. Um, So listen up for that in a bit. But I've just got a little update to share with you before I share all that. Um, Perhaps you remember in a previous podcast episode, I shared with you Heather's story. She wrote to me because she had a car accident while listening to the podcast and her car was tumbling down a hill while she was listening to the podcast, while she was pregnant. And it was listening to the podcast that helped her to stay calm. And she was very, very grateful. And she she wrote to me to tell me that story. So if you haven't heard that, go back to a previous episode to check it out. But anyway, Heather has, she's written to me to give me an update. And so I just wanted to share that with you because she's, her little girl now is two and a half months old, uh, Holly, who she says is so calm and peaceful. She's an absolute dream. And she's written to say, I'm really pleased to tell you that the birth was an amazing natural birth that they hoped and prayed and prepared for. She said most of the labour, she was in the bathtub with the lights off while her husband slept. And she was just chanting whatever came to her mind during the rushes. And that really got her through. She was saying things like my body is opening up, a passageway for the baby, opening wide, etc. And that really, really helped her. She said it was amazing the power of your mind and your voice has over your body. Even up until the very end, I kept thinking, is this really going to happen naturally? And sure enough, it was happening. And she said, she goes on to say, feeling her come out of me and go into my arms was the most amazing feeling. And the one thing that took me by surprise was how my body could go from something so intense to immediate peace and serenity the moment she was out there was almost no recovery I just felt amazing afterward talking everyone's ear off isn't that amazing so she said I just want to thank you and give you a follow-up your podcast was extremely helpful in changing my mindset and preparing me mentally and of course I will never forget the night it played a crucial part in keeping Holly and I safe during it gets me emotional yeah, this stuff's too much for me. I get so emotional with it. So she says, I'll never forget the night. It played a crucial role in keeping Holly and I safe and calm during the accident. I can't wait to tell her someday. Well, Heather, I hope that, well, I'm just so pleased. As you can tell, I'm just in bits now. And this is probably down to what happened to me last week, which I'm going to share in a bit. But Heather, I'm so pleased it turned out brilliantly. And I hope that other women listening can learn from this and, you know, can learn the power of really taking the time to use the stuff that can help you to really manage your mindset and all that stuff that you use to help you as part of your birth prep. So anyway, um, now I want to go on to this week's podcast. So today I want to talk about the idea of taking responsibility for what is happening to you, for your health, for things that you are about to undergo, undertake. Um, So I want to share with you something that happened to me that really, really brought this home. As you know, last week I didn't do a podcast because I had a minor operation that completely wiped me for six. I, I was floored by it. I couldn't even string a sentence together. So there was just absolutely no way that I could have even recorded an intro, let alone a whole episode or do anything around it. So I was I was just bedridden for the whole week. Now, um, the reason I'm sharing this is because this, the similarities to birth are really striking, or at least that's what I ca- that's the conclusion that I came to while I was wallowing in my pit of pity and feeling rubbish. So yeah, now this this op, I basically just had a skin cyst removed. So no big deal. The doctor said it's no big deal. So let's not all have a panic about it. It's a routine thing. And I thought it was going to be no big deal. In fact, they said I could walk home from hospital afterwards. So in my head, 
I was just going to carry on with life. I thought, well, yeah, the same day I'm going to be a little bit worse for wear in the letter that I got from them before. And they said I might be off colour, you know, off colour. I was like, I can cope with off colour. I'll just take it easy, stay in bed. And that was the extent of my planning. I thought the next day, once the anaesthetic had worn off, I'll just be able to get back to it. Um, oh, how wrong I was. <laughs> yeah, my goodness, I crashed. I crashed emotionally. I crashed physically into a very dark, difficult place. I, yeah, I was in incredible pain because, yes, the anaesthetic had worn off and I had a huge gash in my body that was trying to heal. And I was depressed. I was emotional. I was crying. I was, I was all over the place. And it was really, really tough for me. Now, looking back, you know, I was, I went into theatre. There were six of us in theatre. In my head, I was like, this is a little lump. This is like no big deal. Why are there six people in theatre? One of the ladies in there was, looked like she was responsible for kind of keeping me in check, you know, keeping, checking on me. And, and she said she's going to stand next to me and check that I was okay. But she didn't. She kept wandering off. She didn't seem that interested in whether I was okay. When she was, I thought she'd try and make light conversation to help take my mind off the procedure. Um, and then when she asked me what I did, she just didn't seem very interested. She just walked off. She seemed bored. And it was like, whoa, hang on a minute. This is like, you're not even being a nice human being here, uh, which which I was quite surprised at. But I, I didn't take read too much into it at the time because it wasn't, you know, I wasn't in a vulnerable position. Well, maybe I was. I was having my skin, my body cut open, but I didn't feel like I was in a vulnerable position at the time, that's for sure. And so I just went inward and I used a lot of the techniques that I that I used for my birth preparation just to keep me calm. I used a lot of my breathing. I used, um, you know, some of my own tools to help me remove some of the stress and the, and the fear and, and whatever that had come up while I was lying there under the knife, as it were. And, and, and that was really, really useful. And if I didn't have that, I'm sure my experience would have been a million times worse. Now, the thing is, I'm looking back now, laughing at this, going, this really was no big deal, Lex. This really was a little minor thing. You know, I'm not talking a C-section here. I'm not talking other major surgery, other stuff that people, that, that in our heads is, is a big thing that, that we maybe think is more, that could be more traumatic. But what I really want to point out here is, you know, as I was lying there for 25 minutes being worked on, it really struck me how similar this was to birth, you know, and also in the weeks that followed, when I, not the weeks, the week that followed last week, when I was crashing and I was feeling crap, one thing that kept coming to me was, why didn't they tell me that this was going to happen to me? Why didn't they, you know, why didn't they tell me? I So I went into that, I went into that experience, I just thought, I'm just, it's going to be fine, I'm just going to wing it, I'm just going to go with the flow, it's fine, I can take it. Maybe from my confidence of gone, going through two births and thinking, oh, I can take anything, you know, throw me anything. And, and yeah, I was thrown this and it floored me, okay. And the reason that it floored me was this. It was because I didn't take it seriously. I didn't prepare. I didn't do my homework. So I didn't know. I didn't look into this procedure to know whether or not I would be able to carry on doing stuff afterwards. I didn't understand what was about to happen to me. I didn't prepare psychologically for it. If I'd done my research, I would have learned probably that I wouldn't have been able to start work the next day and be fine and run a normal life. And therefore, I wouldn't have put a load of stuff in my diary and then felt really crap about not being able to maintain my diary. And I had to let some people down. So I was struggling with that stuff. And that was hard for me because I'm not used to doing that. And also, one thing I really struggle with is being being pathetic and weak and wussy and and my other half's like it's okay stop being so hard on yourself just accept help stay in bed let me bring you food don't try and do too much you know be okay with this but I wasn't okay I really struggled with this because I expected more I expect you know yet if I'd done my research if I'd done my preparation I would have realized that actually you just need to draw a line through the whole week Lex don't even try and do anything. And I would have just been okay with that. And it was all down to me not doing my research. So then I was like, well, why didn't they tell me? Why didn't they warn me that I'd be like this? And and it's like, again, when you think about birth, it's like, guess what, Lex? Your health and well-being is your responsibility. It's not theirs. You know, so don't hand over your 
power don't hand over to the healthcare professionals thinking they've got your back. They have got your back. Don't get me wrong. They're not there to kind of, you know, they're not there to deliberately traumatise you. But they've got their own stuff going on too. They've got their own agendas. They've got their own things that they're trying to achieve. And in that moment, they their objective was to take the skin cyst out and just, that was it. They they weren't too bothered about, um, the, the surgeon was fun, but the woman who was there to look after me was not so fun. Um, and, you know, so he, he was great. But she, she really didn't seem to care. But it wasn't, as far as she was concerned, she just wanted to make sure I wasn't bawling my eyes out, probably. And she saw I was fine and just wandered off. She said, oh, she doesn't need any help. Uh, I'll just go. But actually, these little nice little words of encouragement can go a long way when you're in these kind of situations. And and maybe she didn't quite realise that. But actually, this was my responsibility to get savvy with what I was doing. And, And I didn't. You know, you've got to meet the health professionals halfway. So I did get warned that I'd be off colour. And of course, understandably, they're not going to write to you and go, hey, you're going to go through real emotional crap after this. It's going to be a nightmare. Uh, you know, put your feet up because it might not have been. And, and they don't want to plant seeds just as in birth, you know, although I would say in birth, a lot of probably healthcare professionals are going to warn you it's going to be the toughest, most painful thing of your life. And, and maybe that is a lot of the problem that is there. So I don't I'm not saying for one minute that I've got the answer to this. But I absolutely believe that no matter what is happening on your health and well-being, whether you're going in for a minor op like I did or something more major and significant like childbirth, like choosing to have a plan, you know, elective C-section, like, you know, this is stuff that you really need to do your homework with. This is your body. When you're having your body go through really intense, powerful stuff. It will affect your mind. It will affect your emotions. Things are going to come up for you and they can really knock you for six. I, you know, I'm see myself, especially with the work I do and doing this podcast. I just feel like such a fool, you know, like here I am telling, telling you, my listeners, oh, you know, you've got to prepare, you've got to do your homework. And there's me not doing that because why didn't I do that? I'm I'm not stupid. I'm an intelligent woman. I, you know, I, I did all the research with my birth, but why did I not do that with this? You know, so it's so easy to see how intelligent women that are holding, you know, good jobs. They've been to university, you know, they, they read and write. They're, they're brilliant and they are doing amazing stuff with their lives. And yet they don't prepare for birth. You know, I have a real understanding of that now because I'm, my goodness, I just did that. And so I'm, you know, sitting here sort of sharing my vulnerability here with you. But I think it's going to help some people, I hope. So if you're one of them listening, that it helps you to maybe wake you up to, you know, oh, yeah, no, she's right. I better do my homework. Then I'm, then that is good enough for me. You know, if I can just sort of uh, flag to you that, you know, it really is really important. If I had done my homework, I do not think I would have been going through what I did last week uh, and therefore uh, suffering in the way that I did. And, and and believe me, I'm not, you know, my level of suffering is just way low on that scale um, compared to what exists out there. So I'm not asking for sympathy. That is not what this is about at all. This is about just sharing my own learning from that experience so that you don't make that mistake. Because if that had been a birth situation for me, that, you know, if you don't prepare and it, you're you're talking birth, this is you can see how this is really going to affect you. You can, you know, and this does happen. This happens a lot. And so I really don't want you to have that, you know, to really uh, maximise your chances of having a positive birth experience. That doesn't mean it's going to be the dream water birth with candlelight and beautiful essential oils. You know, it doesn't mean it has to be that, but it does mean that you feel like you are, you you know what's going on, that you're owning what's going on and you're choosing what's going on in an informed way and you're it's you're you're the one that's in charge of it. it you're not being done to, you're not being carried along by what the, the healthcare person is saying and go, oh you must must do this. You know, there are so many healthcare professionals in birth that will tell women, well, no, you're not allowed to do that. And and we will induce you at 39 weeks. And it's like, well, no, 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 no. No, don't tell me what to do. This is my body, my baby, my birth, my choice. Don't tell me what to do. Um, Using the word no can be really important and essential uh, during birth. So, but you only know 
that you can use the word no if you've done your homework. Otherwise, you just go along with it, right? So today's podcast is really just to encourage you to get savvy, do your homework, no matter what it is that you're going through. If it is just a minor thing like I've just had and got sidelined by or something more, you know, something more spectacular like your birth experience that has the potential to be such an incredible, powerful, magical experience, but it also has the potential to be at the complete opposite end of the scale. So um, that is my learning for today. It's a little bit of a shorter podcast, but I think it's a really important lesson to share. I shared this within my Facebook group and it's got loads and loads of comments, loads of comments. You know, if you haven't joined the Facebook group, do come and join the Fear Free Childbirth closed group. There's some really great support going on in there. So if you've got any questions around birth, around what you're going through, then there are some really wonderful people in there offering support. So um, yeah, but this, so it's once I shared it in there that I realised actually this is something I probably should share on the podcast, which is why I've decided to do that this week, while it's all fresh in my mind. Um, So that's it for this week. And I will see you, not see you. Obviously, I won't see you. See, this is part of my brain. It's not working. I can't string sentences together. I will be again here next week. Bye for now. You've just been listening to me, Alexia Leachman, here on the Fear Free Childbirth Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, this is just a wee reminder that if you'd like to listen to bonus podcast episodes and have access to loads of birth preparation downloads, my video mini series on reducing your fears and so much more, then join the Fearless Mamaship community today. You can join at fearfreechildbirth.com. Until next time, bye for now.